Hello and welcome to the brand new series of On the Road with Sika. On today's episode, I caught up with Love Islander Mike Boateng at Beauty and Beyond Studio in London where he spilled all the beans that went on in the Love Island house plus what he's been up to since he came out. Mike, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you so much for coming on the road with Sika. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> so, how you been? You've been back for how long now? I've been back for three weeks, three weeks Sunday. Three, three weeks Sunday. Sunday. Have you missed South Africa? A little bit. Since you've been back, have you watched back on the episodes? No, I've, I've seen clips. I've seen clips on like YouTube. YouTube. But I've been so busy, I've not really had time to watch it back properly. Like episode by episode. Since being back, obviously, I'm sure you've watched the um, people have told you <laughs> what was being said yeah. um, on the newspaper. You had yeah. some backlash. And at the beginning, some people did say you were being a bit, you were not being genuine. Is that accurate? Um, wait, so what did you want to start with? The papers or, or the general? Um, so the, the paper stuff, I saw all of that. And it was one of them ones where ITV, myself, the police, Everybody knows what was going on before I joined, otherwise I wouldn't have been allowed to go on. So anything that the media came out with was false, and they knew it was false, but they chose to run the stories anyway. So again, everything was false, so that's all done with. Um, what was the other question? The, 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 the false one? Yeah, the false one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought personally that when I was in the villa, I'm probably, and even now watching it back now, I'm probably the only person who said what they that genuinely said what they were about do you know what i mean I, everything i said was the truth everything i said was genuine i never spoke behind anyone's back and i just acted accordingly so so what did you find about yourself that you didn't already know about in terms uh, of being in the villa and in reality i didn't really discover anything new about myself so everything how i am in like at home is how i acted in the villa um if only if anything i say i probably grew if anything, I, I became more perseverant because there are certain situations where, you know, you have to keep a cool head and I felt like I did that. Your brother is a prince. Andrew. Andrew. He did say that um, you and Priscilla yeah. did not get enough airtime. So obviously we didn't see as much as you and Priscilla on TV compared to the others. Is that something that you would agree with? Or? I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really know because I haven't watched. You haven't back. watched all the episodes, but yeah. Obviously, it's like it's over the course of twenty four hours that they can film, they choose to film whatever they want. So I don't know what they put out. Because they also portrayed you in a way where, <laughs> sorry to say this, you were jumping from one lady when Leanne dumped you, mm. and you jumped to Jess, and from Jess when you went to Casa Moore, then that's when you made a lady. Yeah. So people thought you were, you know, being a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> now it's, it's a, that that one that, that one's a weird one because even for me, um, as soon as the Leanne situation had ended, mm. I I kind of told everybody the next day nobody speak to me because I want to take time, obviously reassess the situation and maybe later on think about it. And then I think the next day came after that, and I still kind of was like I don't really want to do anything because it's too soon, but. The powers that be had to come in and interject. They wanted to speak to me and like, okay, you can't really yeah. do nothing. So who would you speak to? And, and at the time, um, if I'm being honest, like the only person who I had a good thing with or I could see something going anywhere with in the villa was Jess. So, And people were questioning that as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it makes sense now because looking at it from how it was viewed, how it was aired, mm -hmm. I kind of get it because it, can, it seems like I left Leanne and then literally straight after that, I went to Jess, but that wasn't actually the case. That's just how they aired it, so. You were, you were a great fan to watch because in my opinion, I think you carried the show. And so when you got eliminated with Priscilla, we were all like, oh no, black love, I've been um, <laughs> eliminated. Were you expecting to be nominated that night? Um, it, it was a weird one because I felt like even before that, the, the previous vote was by the Islanders. So they all choose to, they all chose to keep me and Priscilla in because they felt like we were kind of a strong couple. So I thought maybe the public would have seen that, but you know, it's one of them ones, it is what it is. So we just yeah, had to accept it. it. Yeah, I had to accept it. And now Priscilla has made your mom already. How about yeah. things moving <laughs> so fast? Uh, it, it's, it's nice because what people don't realize is that in the villa, we're with each other 24-7. So I'd say, even though it was like three weeks together, 
that's probably equivalent to like six months of dating outside. Wow. So when we came out, it was just natural. Like my mom wanted to meet her. I was shocked because my mom is not someone who... I saw the video <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, she's not someone who's quick to welcome like, like females into the house, but... She was like excited. She wanted to meet Priscilla and it, it was nice. It was nice. Look, I'm going to digress a little bit. Um, obviously, it's in relation to mental health. Mm. How did you find out about Caroline Flat? They told us um, mm. after. So when we left the villa, um, not that day, but the next day, they mm. told us. So we left the villa on a trip. We came out on a Friday and we got told Saturday. Saturday. And how did you feel? It was sad. It was sad, but it's, it's like, it's one of them ones where, you know, everybody has to really be aware of what's going on, you know, because it's a real thing. Mm. So it's one of the ones we have to kind of learn from it and hopefully everybody can get around them and support each other. Because mental health has become a big talking point when it comes to Love Island, because mm. we've had past contestants that have committed um, committed suicide. So is this something, are you, are you seeking help? Are they helping it? To be honest, ITV do a great job with that. So even with us Islanders, before we even got into the villa, we had assessments after assessments, psychologists, um, professionals who we could speak to in the villa. You got 24 access, 24 hour access to a psychologist whenever you want to see them. Mm. We also had Welfare Wednesdays, which is like kind of, if you want to, they then ask you again if you want to see a psychologist. And then when you come out the villa, you then have access, unlimited access to psychologists as well. So the, the help is there if you need it. So where do you stand on people um, call it, asking for Love Island to be scrapped? Um, I, I don't really agree with it mm. i understand why because of obviously all the mental health stuff that's happened but at the same time as well having gone through it myself i also know that the support is above and beyond what they provide and uh, and it's like it's a it's an opportunity that changes people's lives in in a good way mm. so if you're somebody that's been given that opportunity and your life has changed like for example mine has then it's one of them ones where you can only thank God for. So I think Love Island is great and I would recommend, I highly recommend they continue. <laughs> Back to it. <laughs> I was on Twitter 24-7 <laughs> when, Love, on, when Love Island came on. Yeah. And obviously some people were thinking it was rigged. For instance, sometimes a producer will come on and say, do this. So at some point people thought producers were telling you to do certain things. Is that something that you would like to disclose yeah. to us? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit of a sticky one. Um, uh, <laughs> um, the okay, the producers can never tell you what to say. And I'll leave it as that. They can never tell you what to say. Hey, Michael. No more. And not, nothing else? <laughs> no, I mean, they, they, they can help push along conversations. But ultimately, what you say is what you say. Nobody can control you. So, yeah, pretty much, yeah. What you say, what you say. So were you certain that you were going to come out with a girlfriend, let alone her meeting your f I mean, family? I hope, I hope that I would. Otherwise, the whole thing would have just been... <laughs> because I came from... I come from, like, an like African household, innit? Yeah. So my mom wasn't even too keen on me going on the show in the first mm -hmm. place. So at, at the very least, if I don't come out with somebody then the whole thing would have just been, what was the point? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I was lucky in that sense. And I remember when the family were coming in, yeah. obviously we saw you meeting your twin brothers yeah. and you all got emotional. We saw you like, crying and <laughs> <laughs> some of what was saying, there's your love waiting for you at yeah. home. How was that moment? <laughs> that was, it was beautiful because I hadn't, obviously they've been watching me every day, but I hadn't no contact with them. Mm. And it was, it was just tough because I've gone through such an experience and then to see them as well, it was emotional. So. And you met Priscilla's mum. Yeah, she's, she's lovely as well. <laughs> <laughs> she she kind of grilled me though. Yeah, she did me all <laughs> like, oh, yeah, mommy, mother, <laughs> like, I want to make sure you don't come from a family of witches and wizards. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't they show that part then. Oh, they didn't show that? No, they didn't. Uh, you know, they but she did drop something. Out. She said... We have a culture that we have to speak yeah, and stick yeah, to. Nah, she was she was real with it. She gave me like a good five minute. Mm, this mm -hmm. is what you need to do if you want to take my daughter. And I, I respected it, so I was happy. So the time that you asked Priscilla out, mm -hmm. did you know when you got there? That's when you thought, oh, no. let me. Out. I didn't know. We were sat there, and um, midway through the conversation, the producers kind of pulled me out, and they were like, um, "Like, how how are you feeling?" And I was just like, do "You know what." The environment, the scenery, I think I want to ask it to be my girlfriend. So now I just, I want that. You got the answer. Yeah. So what's next for you, Stu? I know it's too early, but. It's, it's very early. Um, but for me, for me and Priscilla now, it's kind of just 
growing and building, obviously we both got our own brands as well and image. And then we have Mike and Priscilla as a couple as well. So individually, we want to kind of progress down our own routes and then together we want to build. So now you've come up with your clothing line, Shark Nation. <laughs> it's not actually a clothing line. It's a merchandise drop. Merchandise, yeah, okay, merch sure. Drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks good though. Drop. I saw yeah. it. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, thank you. Why did you come out with that? Is it... It was just the whole, um, I came out and when I came out, I realised a lot of footballers and a lot of like fans and stuff have been tw- like tweeting and going off the whole shark thing. But we thought, why not do something to show love to all the people that are supported? And then, um, yeah, we, we decided to come up with the Shark Nation as a, as like a, a one-off merch drop, the brand. And then, you know, from there, we'll see how it goes. What can we expect from you? Because mm. I heard you're into music. Mm-hmm. So are you looking to sign up? To any yeah, the, 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 the music one, I'm kind of keeping hush hush because not a lot of people know about that. Oh. But it's something that I'd like to explore. I, I write music. I, I also do other stuff as well. So, but I'll leave that there for now. And then television, obviously, is something that I want to stay in as well. So, hopefully, more TV appearances, more shows, acting. And then, you know, you'll see Mike on your screens more often. Mm-hmm. So what would you do differently if we were to ask to go back on Love Island? I wouldn't do anything differently. I honestly wouldn't. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably do everything the same and hopefully get the same result as well. And are you looking to go to Ghana soon? Yes, maybe December time. Yeah. December. You were there for a year of return, of course. Yeah. yeah I, I missed it. I've not been back to Ghana. It's bad as well. I've not been back for like 10 years. Oh, wow. So I really, this year, it's on, it's on my bucket list. I have to. Mike, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, On The Road With Sikar. Hey, welcome to...